Yes. Yeah, so this was a very interesting study. This study came out uh, just about a week ago in uh, the British Medical Journal, and it did conclude that among healthy people consuming fish oil, it could actually increase your risk of atrial fibrillation and stroke. So as you can imagine, people are shocked and this is you know making headlines everywhere. Um, but they're not really diving into the story. You know, they're not really giving you the explanation of why are they seeing this or are other studies seeing this? So I thought we could dive into it a little bit now because it's really causing feuding and uh, among scientists and confusion among consumers. You know, I know a lot of people in our audience consume fish oil. A lot of them consume it daily. Um, and so we do want to know is, is there validity to this new claim or what I've realized, it's actually not a new claim, but we'll get into that. So there have been a uh, feuding fish oil studies for years now, right? Scientists have been debating the pros and cons about this. It's not a, a like open closed case, like, like the media presents it. Scientists have been debating this for a long time. Um, there's contradictions everywhere in the literature, and we'll just go through a little bit about it. So this latest fish oil finding, like this, this is the basis of what I want to get across. The, this latest fish oil finding is just the latest in a long line of scientific disagreements about the health effects of food and supplements, right? We've talked about this regarding things like eggs and red meat and salt. This is just one more that you can add to the list. Okay. So we're going to take a little deeper dive here. The reason why this is so important is because um, cardiovascular disease kills a person in the US every 33 seconds, right? So this is a rampant disease in our country. Because of that, doctors and dietitians have been recommending omega-3 fatty acids to reduce uh, cardiovascular events like heart, disease, heart attack and stroke. And following their recommendation, Americans and people worldwide have listened. Fish oil is actually now one of the most used non-vitamin, non-mineral supplements in the US, okay? Now, as I said, in spite of this popularity, the outcomes have actually been contentious from nearly the beginning. So let's start with this study and then we'll roll into what other ones say. This study, basically was trying to resolve this ongoing debate. And the way that they thought to do that was, we're gonna actually examine the consumption of fish oil across the different stages of cardiovascular disease. So a lot of studies will look at one stage. So they might look at the effect of cardiovascular disease on heart attack and like stroke, right? And then like a death outcome. This study, what they did was they looked at over 400,000 people. They were aged 40 to 69. And they said, okay, we're going to start with these healthy people who are consuming fish oil already. And we're going to follow them. They follow them for almost 12 years. And they said, we're going to ask a couple questions. We're going to say, okay, primary prevention, right? Primary prevention is when you have somebody who's healthy already. And let's say this fish oil, if those healthy people took it, it's, it prevented them from developing um, cardiovascular um, events like a heart attack or atrial fibrillation, okay? So what they did was they said, in these healthy people who are taking fish oil already, does it affect the development of cardiovascular disease? And then they said, people who already have markers of cardiovascular disease who are taking fish oil, does it affect the progression of cardiovascular disease? And they had different outcomes they were measuring, like atrial fibrillation, which that's an irregular heart rhythm um, that can lead to blood clots in the heart. If you have atrial fibrillation, they're saying that you can have an increased risk of stroke and heart failure, okay? So AFib or atrial fibrillation, we call that AFib. AFib was like the starting point. And then you would progress to, to either like a stroke, a heart attack, a heart failure, and eventually death. Okay. So these subjects are these, sorry, these researchers are tracking people along this continuum. Okay. So they, uh, 
they basically had, like I said, over 400,000 subjects and classified them into users official and non-users official and follow them for about 12 years. Okay. Are you ready for the results? <laughs> <laughs> this The results are a mixed bag of benefits and risks. Okay. So I'm going to say that from the beginning. Okay, for the people who were healthy, the use of fish oil regularly led to a 13% increased risk of developing atrial fibrillation. So this is where they get the headline that you'll see all over the news now of increasing risk of first time heart disease. Okay, that's a, that's a marker of heart disease, atrial fibrillation. So 13% increased risk of developing atrial fibrillation 5% increased risk of developing stroke. So it did show an 8% reduced risk of um, developing heart failure and no effect on heart attack. So the, this is what the researchers concluded. It says, okay, the, so the increased risk of this first time, first time heart disease and stroke among healthy people led them to caution against the use of fish oil uh, for primary prevention, that means in healthy people, without clear evidence of its benefits. They say our findings suggest caution in the use of fish oil because of the uncertain cardiovascular benefits and adverse effects. So that's quite stunning because oftentimes, you know, scientists don't want to come out and make these sweeping recommendations or suggestions, right? Especially because this is this is potentially going against like American Heart Association and whatnot. So it was significant enough that they came out and said, said that they suggest caution. Okay, so that was amongst healthy people. Now let's go to participants who already had atrial fibrillation. For this group, it actually showed a protective effect. So for um, heart attack, there was a 15% decreased risk. And for heart failure, there's a 5% decreased risk, but no effect on stroke. So the conclusion was that fish oil supplement could help to manage cardiovascular disease if you already have atrial fibrillation. Okay. Um, then for the ones, the last category was people who already had, like, so if somebody already had, let's say a heart attack or a stroke or heart failure, um, they, they're showing that this is interesting. If you already had heart failure, there was a protective effect of fish oil. You had a 9% decreased chance of dying from heart failure, from, from a recurring, uh, you know, from cardiovascular disease, a recurring heart failure. If though you had had a heart attack, consuming fish oil increased your risk of death by 3%. And if you had had a stroke, it increased your risk of death by 4%. So the conclusion here was, Fish oil might benefit people who had had heart failure, but could actually pose a risk for people who had had a stroke or a heart attack. So, I mean, it sounds kind of shocking, right? Like this is, this is not, this is not what the advisory boards are saying. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, the American Heart Association, they don't say this. We've not had a study so far. Like this is one of the reasons why the study was um, so important is because this, this study did break it down into categories. So instead of generalizing people, right, as just people with cardiovascular disease versus healthy people, it broke it down into categories. And now we can start seeing the nuances that are involved in quote unquote disease progression, right? For how we identify and categorize disease, it is not a one size fits all. And we're seeing that even something that we think of as healthy, like a fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids, can have different effects based on your health status, your individual health status. 